Right now, Burke County Sheriff's Office is on the scene of a crash with injuries on Highway 25. This is between Airport and McMaster Road. Both sides of the highway are shut down as crews work on the scene. We'll keep you updated once we learn more about that wreck. First at four, another deputy arrested in fire as the investigation continues into the Charles C. Webster Detention Center. It comes after a sweep of jail cells found contraband from drugs from weapons to drugs. Former Deputy Davion Dubosky is charged with violating oath by public officer and unlawful street gang activity. Dubosky had been with the Richmond County Sheriff's Office since July, but as of today, he's fired. That now makes five deputies arrested and charged for allegedly bringing contraband into the jail. These are the other four deputies on your screen right now. They've also been charged with violating their oaths, accused of giving shanks, clubs, and drugs to inmates. Jackie Campbell, Gabriella Anthony, and Hunter Piper have all bonded out. Jaquan German was not granted bond. Like Dubosky, German's also being charged with unlawful street gang activity. Much more news ahead, but right now we're going to talk Christmas. And Riley, we're just days away, which means people are last-minute shopping right now. And how's that weather looking, if that's the case? Well, definitely going to need to bundle up if you are heading out this evening. Temperatures are already in the mid-40s across most of the area, so thanks to fairly cloudy skies so far today, we have not been able to warm up. So it is cold out there, and these temperatures will generally just be dropping close to 40 late tonight into early tomorrow morning. But that cloud cover will be with us. No rain to talk of at the moment, but as we head past midnight tonight and throughout the day on Tuesday, you can see all this rainfall that is going to be heading our way. So throughout the day tomorrow, on and off showers looks like a very high probability across most of the region all driven by this little dip in our subtropical jet stream so this upper level trough is going to bring us some fairly wet weather and some cool conditions as well temperature wise through this evening will most likely stay in, in the mid to low 40s and then eventually by tomorrow morning that will give way to some rainfall out there. It is going to be a fairly wet and cold Tuesday out there for us across the entire area. We'll have a look at those rainfall totals and when this finally clears out in just about 10 minutes. Thanks so much, Riley. The spread of the Omicron variant is once again threatening to change holiday plans and disrupt the pandemic's progress. Lines of people getting tested before the holidays are popping up. People waiting for hours just to get a COVID test. It's been crazy for uh, the past two years, so every like two, three weeks, me and my wife get tested uh, just in case. According to the CDC, only four states have not found cases yet. Now the concern is whether this variant will cause a wave of cases like Delta did. And we're just five days away from Christmas, and here at home, everyone is preparing for family and friends, which is an added concern with the new variant. But just because Omicron can spread easily doesn't necessarily mean it'll be more deadly. Our Sloan O'Cone is live in the studio, and Sloan, what do local doctors say as far as the holidays go? Our local health officials say don't cancel your holiday plans, but consider tweaking them. They say there are good news and bad news about the new variant. It's highly transmissible, but symptoms seem milder. So use the skills you've built up throughout the pandemic. Their recommendations are simple. If you aren't feeling well, get COVID tested before spending time with family and friends. If you're traveling, be aware of who's around you. Wear a mask, social distance when you can, and wash your hands. AU even recommends grabbing an at-home testing kit to test before you leave or right before seeing your family just to be safe while you're celebrating see if there are any traditions you could move outside try and gather in bigger rooms make accommodations that work best for you and for your family and friends i don't think it's reasonable to say don't go visit friends and family um, we've been in this pandemic a long time so reasonable precautions to keep people safe is what i would recommend um, it wouldn't be the holidays if you can't go visit family and coming up tonight on News 12 at 6 o'clock, I'm working on a story looking at what makes this variant so contagious and what we can expect in the next few weeks. Thanks so much, Sloan. We're still learning more about a shooting that happened in McCormick over the weekend. Today, the city's police chief confirmed that a man is in intensive care after an altercation with his girlfriend. So far, what we know is that it happened here at the Cherry Manor Apartments, just down the road from the county's detention center. Police say the couple had some sort of altercation and that the boyfriend was shot twice in the stomach. So far, investigators have not been able to interview him, and right now the girlfriend has not been charged or arrested. Sled agents say 40-year-old Craig Priester faces murder and weapons charges and the death of 31-year-old Chelsea Frazier. Frazier was shot and killed Saturday night in her own yard on Jackson Street. Priester is now being held in the Allendale County Detention Center. We're working to learn more about the two and what led up to this shooting. We'll keep you updated as we learn more.
The three men facing federal hate crime charges for the killing of Ahmaud Arbery are in court today. The pre-trial hearing started this morning at the federal courthouse in Brunswick, Georgia. Father and son Gregory and Travis McMichael, as well as William Roddy Bryan, are facing a number of charges in connection to interfering with Arbery's rights. This is based on his race and color, attempted kidnapping, and the use of a firearm. Just last month, the three men were convicted for Arbery's murder. A man's body has been recovered after days of searching after he went missing in Georgia's largest lake. And here's a map to show you how far away we are from Lake Lanier, which sits north of Atlanta. 46-year-old James Lindsay fell into Lake Lanier while working on his boat this past Thursday. His body was found just yesterday. Game wardens, divers, and U.S. Army Corps of Engineers searched the lake daily until the body was found. Firefighters are still working to put out hot spots from a dead Lake Mount Fire Department did say they had responded to numerous false alarms at the plant in recent weeks. If you ride the bus, pay attention to your screen right now. These are the last bus times out. On Broad Street, all routes, last stops are at 510. That's for Walton Way, East Augusta, Turpin Hill, Washington Road, Gordon Highway, and the Mall. The last buses from Gordon Highway is Lumpkin Road at 450 and Barton Chapel at 5. Then the last bus from Social Security Administration is West Parkway at 550. All bus services will be closed at 6 for the holidays. Happening tonight, the city of North Augusta will have time to help foster for the holidays with our local animal shelters. This Wednesday, the Aiken County Animal Shelter is asking you to add a furry addition to your family ahead of the holidays. You could pick them up Wednesday and return them on Monday after Christmas or keep them forever if you've fallen in love with your new pet. The shelter will be closed over the holidays, which means the animals will not have a lot of social interaction during that time. So this is your chance to give them that. And if you want to help the homeless through the holidays, Augusta Salvation Army has its annual Red Kettle concert tonight. It's virtual and it gets started at 7 o'clock. All the funds raised will stay local and help people in our city who need it the most. There's going to be live performances. You can head to their Facebook page for the link or just head to our website for more information. You can go to WRDW.com for that link. Still ahead, there's nothing better than watching families come together. We're taking a look at one family ahead of the holidays. It has been a very cold and cloudy day. We're bringing the chance for rainfall heading into our Tuesday. Have a look at that full forecast just after the break. How many miles you could pile of the ashes were all the way up that one door. So, yeah, big mess to clean up, but thankfully it is finally quiet. Uh, but for us here locally, our weather story is not going to be quiet over the next at least 24, 36 hours. We are tracking a decent system that is going to bring us widespread rainfall heading into late tonight and throughout the day tomorrow as well. We've just been generally cloudy and chilly so far today. No rain in our forecast for this evening. But as we head into late tonight and throughout Tuesday, this upper level trough in our subtropical jet stream is going to be moving east. So that's going to bring us the better dynamics to see some rainfall. And it's also helping develop this area of low pressure in the Gulf of Mexico. So all these ingredients combined together, moving east and north, that's what's going to bring us pretty high rain chances. Starting late tonight, after midnight, those rain chances do look better for us. We have started to see some of those showers on radar, mainly south of I-16. The air is just very dry over the region at the moment. So it's going to take several hours for us to uh, see our atmosphere moisten up enough to see that rainfall. But temperatures holding steady in the 40s this evening. We're going to hang on to that cloud cover as well. Northeast winds overnight keeping that cool air in place. The rain will start as we head most likely around 3 a.m. towards daybreak Tuesday. The first part of the day Tuesday looking pretty wet folks across most of the area. That rain could be heavy at times. Notice our temperatures are just not going to be able to increase all too much. Generally close to 40 degrees throughout most of the day tomorrow. Just kind of a mix of low 40s to upper 30s. That rainfall just stays fairly persistent throughout the day tomorrow and even past sunset keeping the chance at least for a few scattered showers. Hours. Now, by daybreak Wednesday, we are clearing out. Winds starting to move mainly out of the west and uh, seeing plenty of sunshine by Wednesday afternoon with high temperatures, at least more seasonal for us into the upper 50s, possibly briefly hitting 60 by Wednesday afternoon. But for your Tuesday, expect a good bit of rainfall. It's going to stay cloudy. It's also going to be chilly. Temperatures not expected to make it out of the 40s tomorrow. Uh, so just kind of rainy and raw day. And rainfall totals is going to be highly dependent on where you live. Our northern counties see a little bit less. The highest rainfall totals should be mainly south of Augusta. 
uh, but cloudy skies. You can see the sun trying to poke out from our Grovetown camp of 47 degrees right now. So we have not been able to warm up all too much, and these chilly temperatures will be with us through this evening. Eventually getting down to the upper 30s, low 40s for low temperatures tonight. So a cold start for your Tuesday along with that rainfall as it continues to fall. Here's your low temperatures by tomorrow morning, close to 40 for most locations. A few of our northern counties possibly could get into the upper 30s. But throughout the day tomorrow, just going to stay on and off shower chances, maybe low visibility at times. Winds will generally be out of the north, northeast again, staying anywhere from around 5 to 10. May be able to see that get a little bit breezier at times tomorrow afternoon. But these are your high temperatures tomorrow. 42, 43 degrees, so just not expect to really be able to warm up too much, just thanks to all the cloud cover and high rain chances. Now, this is a, a look at our rainfall totals. So, once again, our southern counties will most likely see the most rainfall. They could pick up an inch, possibly even up a, to an inch and a half in a few spots, closer to around half inch to up to an inch for us here in Augusta, and then north of I-20, not expecting more than a half inch. So, those lower rain totals will be found up towards the lake. But it is going to stay cold. It's going to stay cloudy. Expect the rainfall for your Tuesday. Those sunny skies do return by Wednesday. And then temperatures heading into our Christmas weekend do look to get back above average. For any outdoor plans Saturday, looking great with high temperatures close to 70. That's good news. Thanks so much, Riley. Christmas came early for a family in Wisconsin. That's because Army Private Terrell Miller made a surprise trip home for the holidays after being stationed overseas. Nick Harrington shows us the reunion. It gets hard. Tyrell Miller hasn't seen his family since May. You're away from home, especially for every other holiday. But on Saturday, <laughs> the Millers got an early Christmas gift. After being stationed in Germany, Army Private First Class Miller surprised his family. I got all my kids under one rope again. Miller's mom, Michelle, picked him up from the Appleton Airport Friday night. She started planning the military homecoming nearly two months ago. But getting the family together without suspicion wasn't easy. So we were going to go to South Carolina to see his graduation in January. So that's what today was about, because he was supposed to call us. That's what they thought. I've been in the military myself for 20-some years. And but when you see the uniform right away, you pick up on that, oh, hey, something special's happening, right? And for us, it was because he hadn't been home in a long time, so we're good for that. Miller's uncle and fellow soldier Don calls Saturday's surprise a blessing, not only for himself. For his mom, especially, and for his aunts and nieces that are here. <laughs> Miller will be deployed again in January. we are missing the birthdays, uh, everything, and watching the whole family grow up. So that's like the hardest part. Still, the Millers say they'll enjoy the time they have together through the start of the new year. Being here with the family is really good. And you can tell his family is so happy to have him home, and we appreciate his service. Private Miller will be able to ring in the new year with his family before he returns to duty back in Germany. Still ahead, it's that time of year again. Traveling to see family, we're taking a look at what to expect, whether on the road or in the air. Here with you. Moderna says its COVID booster does appear to provide protection against the Omicron variant. They made the announcement today that data shows their version of the booster currently used has enough antibodies to fight off the virus. But it also found that a double dose of the booster shot provided a much greater increase in those levels. The news is the latest sign that booster shots are an effective way to protect yourself against the new variant. A third dose of the Pfizer COVID vaccine may be needed for kids. Pfizer's testing a third dose on kids ages six months to five years after finding that the two doses were not enough in some kids. The company says that two doses created a strong enough response in kids under two, but not for kids two to five. With Omicron, three doses has a higher degree of protection. Both the prosecution and defense gave closing arguments in the trial of former Minnesota police officer Kim Potter. Potter killed 20-year-old Dante Wright during a traffic stop. She says that she accidentally grabbed her gun instead of her taser. At the start of the day, the judge gave the panel of jurors their instructions for deliberations. Twelve will decide the verdict once closing arguments are finished. A Royal Caribbean ship returned to Miami with 48 guests and crew members testing positive for COVID. This is video of a similar ship. The Symphony of the Seas ship set sail on December 11th with more than 6,000 passengers. Of the 48 positive cases, 98% were fully vaccinated. The individuals were identified as a result of immediate contact tracing after a guest tested positive. 
And the holiday travel rush is starting, and it seems people are making up for lost time. The Transportation Security Administration says they screened more than 2 million people at airports nationwide. Between December 23rd and January 2nd, AAA expects more than 109 million people to travel 50 miles or more. And if you are taking your car to travel this week, here are the gas prices you can expect. The average price of gas in Georgia has fallen, but rising in South Carolina. The average for Georgia is about three twelve a gallon. And even though South Carolina went up almost a dime, it's still under three dollars. Here at home in Augusta, we're seeing about three seventeen. An organization in Savannah called Safe Shelter got an extra special delivery thanks to some realtors in the area, providing gifts for women and kids looking to start over after being impacted by domestic violence. Sam Bowman takes a look at their gifts. That truck gets bigger every year. Like, it was a small part last year. Today it was a big truck. A big truck is uh, full of gifts. Over a thousand gifts were, were boxed up. For more than 25 years, the Savannah Area Board of Realtors have been making this important stop at Safe Shelter in Savannah. It is a tradition, and the realtors enjoy it. Uh, we have a lot of fun doing it. Be careful going up. Helping Santa make every child's Christmas wish come true. I see a basketball rat come through here. That kid is going to love that basketball rat. Do you hear me? And although some of the gifts might not seem all that exciting, to those who receive them, well... They mean more than you can imagine. It gives them a chance to feel independent. They get to cook a meal at home, in their own home, not in the shelter. They get to have a new microwave, not a used microwave that somebody gave them. These realtors giving families a firm foundation to build on. You can't imagine what they're going through and something to help them through one of the toughest times they could possibly have in their life. It's, it's the little things that we could do, anything we could do. Right there, right there. And in return, all I hope they do, especially the, the little kids, is when they open these gifts that they wanted the entire year, they yet let out a big scream and say, yes, I love this. Filling homes with a little magic <laughs> and a lot of love. There's the Santa Claus, and people do care about them. And it's so nice to see people coming together to give back to others, and all they want to do is just put smiles on families' faces. Just into the newsroom, Richmond County Sheriff's Office says they're handling a COVID outbreak at the Charles B. Webster Detention Center. Right now, they say 16 inmates have tested positive at this time. They say they're following CDC guidelines to stop the spread. Well, remember, heading into our Tuesday, it is going to be a very cold day. High temperatures only in the 40s tomorrow, but we're close to 70 by Christmas Day. Now look at that full seven-day forecast just after the break. The live mic. Take a look at this. Santa brought a little holiday cheer to some kids in Alaska. The Fallen Outdoors team hosted an event where military families could come out and have some fun. Kids got to ice fish inside, fishing huts where they could stay nice and warm, and some even took pictures with Santa. But Riley, talk about a real Christmas right there. I know, and definitely feeling much more like Christmas time up in Alaska than what we're going to feel by Christmas Day, but that looks like a great time out there. Ice fishing is still something I've never done before, but it's on my bucket list. <laughs> you know what? I would like to do that, too. I think that would sound pretty cool. But, you know, we'd have to go to Alaska or somewhere to do I that. I know. Yeah, and it looks like everything's already frozen up there, so they're able to just kind of park the hut on the lake do some fishing, and hey, it looks like they actually caught uh, something there. Yeah, I know. It looks really cool. And here at home, Riley, we're actually seeing some cooler weather, so I guess if we want that yeah. Christmas feel, we better enjoy it while it's here. That's exactly right, Zana. We do have high pressure sitting towards our north, so that's filtering in some cooler than average air for us. Temps only in the 40s this afternoon, so it is feeling much cooler than average, and that will continue for the rest of tonight and into our Tuesday. Tuesday, this area of low pressure in the Gulf of Mexico is going to start bringing us some rainfall late tonight, and that's going to stay on and off throughout the day on Tuesday, so be prepared for some very soggy conditions, and those temps are going to stay cold as well. Only hitting the mid-40s for high temperatures tomorrow. That sunshine does return by Wednesday, and temperatures look more seasonal Wednesday into Thursday. Thanks so much, Riley. We're going to have much more news and weather right here on First at 4 after this break. and a negative COVID test within 24 hours. 
With COVID surging again across much of the country, some hospitals and clinics are using creative tactics to encourage kids to get vaccinated. For many kids, rolling up their sleeves to get a shot can come with a heavy dose of anxiety, but a Southern California hospital is using dogs to help those who are scared. These canines are specially trained to comfort and cuddle and will help kids get past the big poke. We were very nervous and they didn't want to come back for the second dose. And the moment we entered and they saw the dogs, uh, they ran into it and they were uh, more calm. And this just goes to show dogs help with everything. And it's just an idea catching on at other hospitals around the U.S. So the answer is just get those pups in there and the kids will not even know that they got that shot. Check this out. Spider-Man No Way Home is now the third best opening of all time over the weekend. In just North America alone, the movie earned more than $250 million in ticket sales. It smashed pandemic pandemic era box office records and is now behind Avengers Endgame and Infinity War. Overseas, the movie collected more than $334 million. So hopefully it was worth it. Riley, I'm hearing good things. It's on my list. It's on my list. I really do want to see it. Love Tom Holland. Oh, I know. It's on mine, too. I'm glad to see more people getting out about into the movie theaters again. So glad to see the box. Even dogs love a good ugly sweater contest. In Minnesota, the pups put on their ugliest sweaters. But hey, to me, they still look cute doing it. Prizes were given out for the best and worst outfits. And the dogs got the chance to see Santa. The best part is it was all to support an animal rescue there. But geez, also cute. I don't know if any are really ugly, Riley, because the dogs are just so cute wearing them. Oh, they all look very dapper. And there's a few good ones in there. You got the Mr. Grinch right there. You got the classic sweater on the Golden <laughs> Retriever. I think it's tough to pick a winner in that group. I they know. All look I think I think cute. they all win, and they all have like smiles on their faces. You can tell. Oh yeah, I think they're they're nice and pampered. They're loving it, getting to show off their costumes. Good stuff there. Always love seeing the pooches. All right, for Tuesday, we are expecting widespread rain.